Hello everybody, this is Paul from Off Grid Desert Farming with Paul and Adrian. This is April 27th, 2024. I want to welcome you to our broadcast uh, today. If this is your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you won't miss any of our breaking news. So we're going to try to bring you up to date on what has happened the last uh, 12 to 24 hours. A lot of crazy things going on, but uh, this article just came out uh about Zelensky and uh, what he's actually doing with uh, a lot of the money that the uh, the world is giving him to fight Russia. Much of Ukraine aid is stolen, French party leader says Western assistance to Kiev prolongs the conflict with Russia and enriches corrupt officials. Florian Philippot has said, so this is a... Um, this is not uh, somebody that hates Ukraine, but this is a French politician right here, uh, for Florin Philippot, uh, and he is admitting what everybody else uh, in the world pretty much knows, that Ukraine probably is one of the most corrupt countries in the entire world. Even Bill Gates said Ukraine is corrupt. So let's see what he said. He said, a large part of Western aid to Kiev is being embezzled by Ukrainian officials despite President Vladimir Zelensky's assurance that it is being used in the fight against Russia. A top French politician has said in a post on Twitter, formerly, uh, it's called X now, formerly Twitter, on Friday, that is today, Florian Philippot, leader of the Patriots or Les Patriots, party and a longtime vocal critic of Western assistance to Ukraine, alleges that Zelensky was lying when he claimed that all the USA to his country goes to the battlefield. He said, in reality, a large part is diverted and goes into corruption. Now, this is not half of it. This is not a quarter of it. He said a large part of all of those billions and billions of dollars a year Hard-earned taxpay money goes into corruption. Philippot wrote, he noted that Kiev's omission last month that it had not received the $17. billion dollars uh, in aid collected by Poland and the European Commission. Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Shmigal claimed that he had no idea what happened to the funds. So folks, here's $17 billion dollars that was collected by Poland and the European Commission we don't know where it is. We don't know where the money went. Maybe, uh, maybe I, uh, put my money in a Swiss bank account and, uh, and I'm going to buy me more mansions around the world. You know, maybe Miami Beach, uh, Los Angeles, uh, California, or oh, maybe even Washington DC so I can be close to my friend, uh, uh, Joe Biden, you know, uh, so uh, Philippot also pointed to a recent corruption scandal involving Ukrainian agricultural minister Nikolay Skolsky, who was accused of illegally appropriating state land worth nearly $6.9 million. Yet another case of corruption in this country, which is one of the most corrupt uh, on the planet, the French politician remarks. So folks, you know, you're giving money to this guy right here. Listen. You're giving money, and we did not even vote. Let me get the picture up. But you're giving money to this guy right here that's taking your hard-earned tax money. He doesn't care about his own citizens, folks. He doesn't care about his fellow Ukrainians. All he's interested in is plenty of money for drugs to go up his nose. He doesn't care if 100,000 uh, 100, more of his fellow citizens are dead. He doesn't care. But we continue to to give him money. This is a more another article. Ukraine president has embezzled at least four hundred million dollars from fuel purchase aid. Report: The U.S. has been helping Ukraine since Russia started its special military operation on February the twenty fourth. I want to thank all the Americans for your generous gift to Ukraine because uh, I am going to use the money for my retirement uh, fund 
and um, you know I can buy new Mercedes Benz and I can live like a king after this war is over you know I might even make a trip to uh, the United States too and go to Disney World and celebrate my new my new wealth you know I'm going to live like an oligarch after this war is over ha 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 thank you thank you Americans thank you European Union you are so generous uh, to my to my retirement fund I just love you I love Americans I love this war oh I love to send my my fellow citizens to the to the battlefield to get killed oh but as long as I make money it's okay you know thank you thank you thank you so um, that's my impression of Vladimir Zelensky Washington Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky and his entourage have embezzled at least 400 U.S. million dollars, which was sent to the country for the purchase of diesel fuel, reported the Russian news agency TASS, citing U.S. journalist, journalist Seymour Hersh. On his website, Hersh, citing sources, claimed the Ukrainian president and many of his entourage have been skimming untold millions from the American dollars earmarked for diesel fuel payments. One estimate by analysts from the Central Intelligence Agency put the embezzlement funds at at least $400 million last year, and this was in 2023. The level of corruption in Kiev is approaching that of the Afghan war, although there will be no professional audit reports emerging from Ukraine. According to Hirsch's sources, Hirsch has blamed U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and the National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, for the ongoing crisis in the U.S. government, which allegedly suffers from discord between the White House and the intelligence community. So, folks, even our CIA director, uh, uh, Burns, had flown to Ukraine and had a meeting with Zelensky and told him to quit stealing so much money. It's looking bad. But he continues to do that, folks. He continues to embezzle the money. And, and Zelensky did have a message for all the Congress people and the senators. This is Z Zelensky's message to all of our politicians who gave him all that money. Uh, listen here, I want to tell you, um, we have suitcases full of money waiting for um, uh, Nancy Pelosi and, uh, and all of you generous Congress people from the U.S., please come to Kiev, and uh, I will personally give you uh, suitcases of cash so you can take home uh, to your family. I, I, I want to thank you once again. You are so generous, and I love you, Americans. I love you, Congress people, uh, for making all of this happen. God bless you. So um, uh, that's what's happening, folks, in the world you know, this is a crazy world, and it's not going to get any better. We're throwing our money away. Uh, you, as an American citizen, had no say in all of the money that is being spent by our Congress, folks. We don't have a say in it, but that's what's going on. So let me catch you up to news of what's actually going on. So everybody thought that this war in Ukraine would bankrupt the Russians that Russia would uh, get on a downhill spiral in their economy. But the exact opposite has happened. Now, this is the latest information from TASC. On April the 27th, that is today, economic figures turn out above projections for early 2024. Russia's GDP grew by... 6% in January to February in annual terms the Russian president has stressed. So folks, Russia's economy is booming. All of the sanctions, the 11 or 12 packages of sanctions the United States and Europe has placed on Russia has done nothing to slow down the Russian engine, the Russian economic engine. Economic figures at the beginning of the year were above projections, Russian President Vladimir Putin said, adding that the country's GDP grew by 6% in January and February, year on year. The data at the beginning of the year turned out to be far above forecasts provided by the government. The Bank of Russia and some experts said Russia's GDP grew by 6% in January to February. In annual terms, he said at a meeting of 
Economic issues, Russia's federal budget revenues rose more than 1 to 5 point or 1.5 fold in January to March year on year. Economic growth positively influences the federal budget with its revenues surpassing last year's substantially. In particular, non-oil and gas revenues surged by 43% in the first quarter, whereas total federal budget revenues increased more than 1.5 fold in the three months compared to the previous year. So folks, Russia is booming while Europe is suffering. Europe is now suffering an economic decline. Their factories are closing all because they chose to side with our country to destroy Russia. And in fact, it is destroying their economy so bad that they are converting their economies over to a war economy, trying to save their countries from going bankrupt, folks. It has backfired. It has backfired on the European Union, France, Germany, and the UK Their factories are closing. Their people are out of work. The price of liquid natural gas and all of the commodities are skyrocketing in Europe, all because they want to destroy Russia, and they are the ones that's being destroyed. Thank you, uh, Joe Biden, for starting this war. Thank you, Victoria Nuland, for starting this war. And uh, this is only going to get worse. And Russia, by the way, is not getting defeated, folks. In fact... Russia is now starting their long-awaited counteroffensive in Ukraine. Domino of developments in the northeast of Kharkov. Russian forces have occupied Kalis, uh, Klisvokol and threatened the immediate collapse of the defense of Kupinsk. So Russia is making major, major strides. Uh, they are going to invade Kharkov and surround it uh, very, very soon. That is happening. The Ukrainian defenses are collapsing, folks, right now before everyone's eyes. Let me uh, click on this article. But this is what is happening. Kiev now is in a dilemma. The Russians have opened up a new big front for them. Russian forces have launched uh, offensive operations and have managed to capture Kliskova, uh, in the northeastern front of Kupinets, the Ukrainians are starting to retreat from this uh, front as well. The Russian military command decided to open a second major front on the Ukrainian army as- after Donetsk uh, in order to take advantage of the redeployment of forces attempted by the Ukrainian uh, General Skursky. Kiev now must choose between stabilizing the front in two large areas at once in Donetsk and now in the region northeast of Kharkiv. These settlements is very important for the defense of Kupinsk. The Ukrainians may be led to a domino collapse and immediately lose the settlements of Ivanovka and Kolyarovka. According to the information, the Russians already control the dominant heights of the area of Klislovka. Any attempts by the Ukrainian armed forces to support their garrisons with reserves along the only route of the access uh, is intercepted by the Russian troops. So, folks, Russia is now rolling over uh, the defenses. Uh, We do have Ukrainian fighting back, though. Another Russian oil refinery was hit by Ukrainian kamikaze drones. This just happened. Uh, Let me see if we have a video. But uh, Ukraine has decided now uh, to strike the Russian oil infrastructure in Russia. Uh, this is a video of the strike. Uh, they are trying to hit Russia's industrial uh, enterprises. You can see the major blast going on right now uh, to try to uh, limit some of the uh, oil and gas production in Russia. So this is ongoing, folks, and, and I do believe uh, there will be a strike sometime soon on the Kerch Bridge. We've been talking about that. Russia's defense ministry said that 66 drones were intercepted over Krasnodar region, located in the southern part of the country. Earlier this week, Ukraine began ramping up drone attacks on Russian refineries after the Biden administration signed a new military aid package Worth billions of dollars, Ukraine's strategy in the war has shifted to attacking Moscow's oil revenue by precision-guided strikes on the country's energy infrastructure. 
So far, drone strikes have knocked out about 10% of Russia's oil refinery capacity. This comes as Western sanctions fail to crush Putin's oil-rich economy, funding the war efforts. So this is going to continue. I believe that um, that Ukraine is going to uh, continue to strike, but Russia is also striking back. Russian forces strike train carrying Western weapons. The Ministry of Defense has said the attack took place in Russia's Donetsk People's Republic, according to to the defense minister. Russian forces have struck a freight train carrying military equipment supplied to Ukrainian forces by Kiev's western backers. The defense ministry in Moscow has said the combined attack involved aircraft, missiles, and artillery. Uh, The ministry said in a statement on Friday, a train with western weapons and military equipment was hit in the area of the settlement of Yudachnov, in Russian, in the Donetsk People's Republic, um, Yildachno, translated as lucky in English, is located in the western part of the Republic. Personnel and equipment from the 67th Ukrainian Mechanized Brigade were also struck at the well- railway loading station in the area of Balaklikya in Ukraine's Kharkov region. So Russia is taking out uh, a lot of the Western weapons that are being supplied to Ukraine, uh, folks, and they are systematically doing this. Let's skip that for now. Russia also has killed seven Czech army officers after Russian missiles hit Kharkiv. The rocket hit the building where the meeting with the SBU officials were taking place. Uh, this just happened, folks. Seven Czech army officers were killed this morning in Kharkiv. After being hit by a Russian missile, the rocket hit the building where the meetings were uh, with the SBU officials were taking place. The Russian general staff have received Kremlin approval for the uh, direction of the major Russian offensive that is set to launch in the coming weeks after the May 9th victory parade in Moscow that will be uh, Kharkov and not Odessa for a series of regions that mainly have to do with the proximity of the supply lines of the Russian army. So folks, Russia is taking out a lot of these NATO uh, people. Uh, Let me read you this article here. Uh, Foreign Affairs, it says, hundreds of dead NATO soldiers and officers in Ukraine, they were operators of the Western air defense systems, They die when Russia destroys Western air defense systems like the Patriot missile batteries. So, folks, we've been telling you this a long time that it is not, it is not Ukrainian soldiers who are manning the Patriot missile batteries and all these Western supplied arms. It is NATO soldiers and mercenaries. NATO soldiers and officers die when Western air defense systems are destroyed in Ukraine. This revelation is made by Foreign Affairs Magazine, according to Russian media. If this is true, then the number of NATO casualties in Ukraine is quite high. Air defense operators, special forces, advisors, as the Americans themselves have reported that Russia has carried out the largest air defense suppression in the world since the start of 2022. Foreign Affairs Magazine published revealing material acknowledging the presence of regular NATO military personnel. So this is not mercenaries, folks. This is regular NATO uh, personnel. According to the magazine, Western officers operate the air defense systems in Ukraine. In addition, the Foreign Affairs Magazine reported that the NATO Special Forces have been operating in Ukraine for a very long time. From the training grounds to the front lines, hundreds of military personnel from the U.S., Great Britain, France, Germany, and Poland have been involved in the conflict. Foreign militias, I went too far, uh, foreign militaries ensure the operation 
of the complex Western air defense systems, notably the Patriot Air Defense Systems. According to this publication, almost all Ukrainian air defenses is now under NATO control. Folks, we've been telling you this for two years. Nobody wanted to believe me. I told you from day one that NATO is involved in this war. Now we have proof coming out two years after the war started. According to the publication, almost all the Ukrainian air defenses is under NATO control, and most of the crews are professional military personnel for, from the North Atlantic Alliance countries. Even American soldiers, folks, regular American soldiers have died, and Joe Biden is covering up the deaths of our sons and daughters. Taking into account the bombing of Western air defense systems by the Russian Air Force, it is understood that the losses of NATO personnel are high. The Russians are wondering if this foreign affairs report is preparing the Western people for something else like a more direct NATO involvement in Ukraine. The French losses spoke. Last week, Russian Defense Minister uh, Ministry reported numerous precision strikes on Ukrainian UAV pilot training centers, temporary deployment bases of Ukrainian forces, nationalist military formations, and foreign mercenaries. This was followed by information about the deployment of French forces in the city of Slavinovsk. According to Western military sources, Russia, uh, the Russian strike killed about 40 soldiers and wounded about 300 more. Most of the victims were reportedly members of the French Foreign Legion. Hospitals in the city of Slavinots could not provide the necessary care to so many victims. That is why the Ukrainians and foreigners were urgently evacuating uh, the wounded to Pavlograd. The strike in Dnipropetrovsk on April 19th, the Russian Aerospace Forces launched a massive raid on Dnipropetrovsk. The target was a hotel uh, near the local military airport. As a result of the attack, many Ukrainian soldiers, officers, and foreign mercenaries were killed and wounded. So, folks, uh, this is what is happening. A uh, former French officer of the French army is drifting into Ukraine. In Ukraine, a large number of French military personnel are now participating in hostilities along with the Ukrainian armed forces. French forces participate as mercenaries, folks. So this is happening. Like I said, Russia is taking out a lot of these mercenaries. And if NATO decides uh, to uh, send regular forces, they will be destroyed. Folks, the war is basically over. All these aid packages is doing is prolonging the suffering for the Ukrainians. The UK defense chief says that Ukraine to increase long-range strikes in Russia. So folks, I mean, the war is not going to stop. The leaders of the world... Uh, do not want this war to stop. They want to continue the war. Just as President Biden was signing into effect the newly approved foreign defense package, which includes $60 billion for Ukraine, the United Kingdom also rolled out its own massive aid package, uh, first unveiled on Tuesday. Britain announced its single largest aid package for Ukraine yet, the equivalent of uh, $620 million According to UK NATO officials, the arms include storm shadow missiles, among a total of 1,600 strike and air defense missiles, 4 million rounds of ammunition, 60 boats, and over 400 vehicles. So folks, uh, like I said, men like this who do not want peace, they're going to uh, take the world into a thermonuclear war. They will not stop. Uh, even the defense minister of Russia says the U.S. created the Ukraine conflict. Sergei Sogu, Washington spreads global chaos for its own benefit, the Russian defense, uh, defense minister has said. You know, and this is why my channel is being targeted. This is why I am being targeted as a journalist. Folks, because we do tell you the truth. You're not going to hear this information on CNN. You're not going to hear it on Fox. But we are not afraid to give you the truth, folks. And this is the truth. We are responsible for this war in Ukraine. This war in Ukraine did not have to happen in the first place. It didn't have to happen, folks. But we overthrew the legitimate government of Ukraine. Our CIA did in 2014 under uh, Barack Obama, under Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton, Victoria Nuland. They planned the operation and they started this war. 
not Russia. Russia is just responding to our aggression. So the U, uh, the uh, Russian defense minister said the U.S. is behind the Ukraine conflict and is deliberately trying to prolong the fighting. Russian defense minister Sergei Sogu said on Friday he was speaking uh, at a meeting with his counterparts from the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, a nine-strong political and economic defense organization. So. I only have about 30 minutes to do these broadcasts, so I'm just going to have to go to headlines. Uh, this is just more uh, headlines coming in. But folks, uh, things are accelerating. We did have a massive tornado outbreak, folks, a apocalyptic tornado outbreak yesterday and last night. Uh, there were multiple tornadoes that destroyed a lot of towns in their path. Uh, an outbreak of fierce tornadoes in Iowa on uh, uh, yesterday at about 7 o'clock. So this is uh, one video. Um, let me just show you. This is one of the videos of the tornadoes uh, throughout the Midwest, Iowa. Uh, like I said, they did leave a path of destruction. Please pray for those poor people that lived in the, uh, the path of these tornadoes, folks. And it's not going to get worse. This is springtime. Uh, and all of these, um, all of these tornadoes do pop up, but this is just another, uh, video of one of the massive, uh, tornadoes that hit the area last night. Like I said, there's been a lot of destruction all over the area. This is just, um, uh, this is just one, uh, video of the destruction. You can see the houses are completely gone, folks. They've been blown off their foundation. There's nothing but rubble. Uh, and these events are going to continue to happen when cold weather comes down from Canada and meets the hot air mass from the Gulf and from the tropics. You end up with severe weather. It usually happens in the spring and the fall. But this is uh, just a, uh, uh, a small glimpse of uh, many of the places that was destroyed. So I did want to... To stop here, folks, we do have a lot more information. But listen, time is growing short. We're going to have more and more natural disasters. Uh, it has been reported now that uh, bird flu is showing up in cattle herds uh, and in your milk supply, folks. So just be aware that things are happening in the world. No one knows where this is all going to end, but I don't think it's going to end very good. We have a major war now. Uh, in Ukraine, we have a major war in the Middle East with Ukraine. I'm sorry, with uh, Israel and uh, Hezbollah and Iran uh, just percolating over there. So I'm going to give you an opportunity, folks. If you do not know Jesus Christ, if he is not your Lord and Savior, don't wait another minute. You know, I've released uh, a lot of music on my channel and a lot of people, they ignore my music, folks, but these are very, very good thought provoking songs. And uh, if you have time, please watch them. They're only three or four minutes long. But folks, time is growing short. We don't know how much time we have left. And nobody knows the day or an hour that we're going to die. I mean, you could live another 40 years or you could die in a car wreck tomorrow or a heart attack, folks. But if you die in your sins, then your destination is hell. And we don't wish anybody to go to hell on our channel. We don't wish any harm on anybody. So I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. There is only one way to heaven, folks. You know, God loves you. God is just waiting for you. He's waiting for some of you your whole life. You've rejected God. You've cursed God. You blame God for all your troubles. But folks, we have an enemy, and the enemy's name is Satan. Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but God has come to give you life and my life more abundantly. You're blaming God for what the devil has done in your life, folks. But Jesus Christ can heal those hurts. He can mend those broken hearts. And only he can do that. And he's calling out you, uh, calling out your name today. Don't reject me any longer. Because you could die in one of these tornadoes. You could die in multiple different kind of scenarios, folks. You're not going to get a letter in the mail saying next Thursday at 4 o'clock you're going to perish. You're not going to get a warning when you die. It happens suddenly. So folks, don't put it off another day. If you cannot say for 100% that if you die today you would go to heaven and you want to make sure, if you will say this prayer, 
and believe it in your heart, Jesus Christ will save you right now. Just say, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, Lord, and I ask you right now to forgive me of all of my sins and wash them away with your precious blood. I do believe that you are the Son of God, and I do believe that you died on that cross, and you shed your blood for me, and you rose again the third day. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving all of my sins. And thank you, Jesus, for giving me eternal life. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, you are saved and you are born again, folks. Nobody, nobody can take you out of God's hands. But listen, we just got to be ready. We got to be ready for, for anything. And I did want to uh, see if I could play a song for you. Uh, I just uh, put this up on our YouTube channel. But this is uh, this is a song about what's going to happen when you die, folks. Uh, it's going to happen. Uh, what's going to happen when you die? This song is called If You Died Right Now, Where Would You Go? I hope you'll be able to hear this. But uh, folks, just listen to the words. So thank you guys for watching our video. Please share us out. God bless you. Remember, Jesus Christ loves you. He's coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without him. Bye-bye.